Okay, so in this video, we're gonna show you how to refinish a bathtub, specifically a cast iron tub, very solid construction, something that you can't even buy these days anymore having this, this curvature. So it's gonna be really great to refinish this. I typically don't refinish tubs, but in this circumstances, the, the money wasn't here to revamp everything. So this is the next best thing you can do is to refinish your tub. We're gonna get right into it. You only need a few tools, but I wanna address a bunch of things that you don't see in a lot of other videos on refinishing tubs that I think are really important to make it a long lasting finish. So a couple of the items that I have is just a, this is a glazing tool. It has a nice sharp edge on it. This is to remove caulking, uh, scrape anything off the tub. I just have a linoleum life cutter. This also helps scrape out the grout joints and get, get rid of the caulking. We have a couple of these putty knives. This may be used to help with the spreading of it. What we're gonna be actually using for our kits, there's many different brands, but the one that I like to use is this Ecopole 2K. This is an epoxy-based product. So you're basically pouring it. It's not actually painting, it's more glazing the tub. So we'll show you how to do that here in a few moments. Another important thing is cleaning the tub. Lysol power toilet bowl cleaner. The reason you wanna use this is that it's actually gonna etch the tub. So this is a very strong cleaner and we're gonna clean this tub thoroughly before we get started. I also have some scrubby pads. These are little white scrub pads. This is gonna help with the cleaning process. I actually have a palm sander too with some 80 grit sandpaper. That's gonna make sure that I get any gunk off of my tub. Again, the most important thing you can do is get this tub clean and ready to go before you start any of the application. So having this, uh, the tub really clean is gonna be important. So the palm sander is just to help cut some of that bigger stuff out of there. We got frog tape. This is the tape off of all our towel. You don't wanna have this getting on our tile in any shape or form. So you wanna use some good masking tape. I have some acetone. This is just to help get some of this caulking off of the edge of the tub if it's really stubborn. I have a tub removal tool for the drain. So this is gonna be helpful to get rid of, uh, take out the drain. That's where you don't see most videos are not removing the drain. I think for you to have a really good finish, this is the area that there's always an issue. You always come back years later and you see the finish coming off around the tub drain. It's because they left the tub drain there. So take the tub drain out and uh, we'll show you how to do that and get everything clean there. Okay, so the first step before we get cleaning, we're gonna actually take the overflow off. Again, this is a step that I find to be on most videos, everyone's trying to keep these things intact. And this is where the issue you're gonna have when you're free finishing a tub is getting nice and close to the, the valve. So just like a light switch cover, I think it's important just to take this off of here. You're gonna have a better finished product if you can actually get behind this. Why tape this and have all of the issues of having stuff, you know, just like if you had a door handle, you're not gonna paint around a door handle. You're gonna take that door handle off. So take the drain assembly off. Now we're gonna keep the, the drain intact because we're gonna be doing all this cleaning, but I just wanna take the overflow out for now. Okay, then I'm gonna take my glazing tool and I'm gonna scrape off all the existing caulking around the tub. And that's where this linoleum knife kind of helps out too. Because you can, you really just want to get it so that it's behind the tile because we're going to end up recaulking this again after, after we've refinished the tub. The scraper is kind of razor sharp, so it really helps scraping this off the tub. I'm gonna just use a little bit of acetone to weaken some of this up too. And again, I'm not worried about I'm not worried about the caulking behind the tile. So I don't have to get this all the way back to the backer board or anything. I just need to get this so it's recessed behind the tile a little bit. So that when I'm putting that finish coat on there, that you're not gonna have any old caulking. Because this is not gonna adhere well. You know, the product is not made to adhere to silicone or caulking. So you need to just make sure it's cut back behind the tile. So this is one area that all the other videos are trying to tell you to protect, and that's this grout joint. Probably any type of refinishing kit that you use is gonna end up ruining this joint and you're gonna have to caulk it anyways. So just eliminate 
as much grout just below the towel layer as possible, get it off of the tub. And then when we tape this off, we're just gonna be taping off the tile and then all of this epoxy that we're gonna be pouring over the tub, it's gonna end up getting into this joint anyway. So don't be too overly concerned about the product getting into this grout joint because we're gonna re against that tub. Let's just go ahead and remove the grout and the caulking at that joint. I'm not removing it all the way down to the subfloor. I'm just getting it down below the tile layer and then off of the tub, obviously. You always have to make sure that your temperature in your bathroom is between 70 and 75 degrees. I'm sweating, so obviously it's 75 degrees. It's pretty warm, but you don't want it to, you don't want your tub to be too cold. So if you're like in a vacant home or something that's turned down really a lot, you want to make sure that this room, get a space heater in here. Make sure that this tub is warm as well, because all of the temperature is going to affect the way that you finish the tub. Secondly, do the cleaning the night before or the day before. It's gonna make it a lot easier to tape everything. Any water on the tub is gonna create a problem as well. So I like to do all the prep the night before and then start the, the actual finishing the next day. We got a little bit of acetone. This is just to help get some of this older caulking off of here. So I'm just gonna use a rag just to dampen everything and then scrape it again. This helps, helps kind of it's like a bond breaker. It kind of helps weaken that old caulking. I'm gonna sand this down with a palm sander before I go etching it with the uh, Lysol. But this is just 80 grit. I don't wanna get something that's too, too aggressive. Just something that would get any extra scum off of. Just kind of rough up the surface a little bit. So we'll just use it full strength, scrub everything in, let it sit for, for about a minute, and then we'll wipe everything off. Okay, so this is the next important step, is taking out that tub drain. This is where all the problems usually lie with a refinishing kit. You end up getting the paint that goes over top of the, the plate, of, of your finished drain, or it can actually go into your drain and cause a lot of issues. But you always see, this is the area that always peels up and bubbles and creates problems. To eliminate that problem, let's just take the drain out and get a complete finish underneath of it. Typically, one of these rigid tools with the crosshairs usually work for this, but this is an older style tub drain that is just one straight thing. So I'm just gonna use a pair, pair of needle nose pliers and then just apply force on the drain. Boy, that's really on there. We're gonna cut off this trap off the bottom of the tub since we can't get it, since it's so old, it's kind of corroded to it. So I'm gonna use a torch blade on my sawzall. It works. Okay, so now that we got that cut off, we should be able to pull this up. Okay, so then you're gonna wanna really scrape all this putty off and get this nice and clean. Is that you need a hair dryer? or a heat gun, this is just a heat gun. And since I did this the night before, it should be all dry, but you just wanna make sure and just uh, run your hair dryer around to make sure that there isn't any water sitting anywhere. Okay, so you wanna definitely protect your floor. So you got some some ram board that we're gonna put down. And I got some frog tape. First, before I even put this down, I wanna, I wanna tape this tile. So now taping this, what I'm gonna suggest 
is that you actually tape this to the tub just slightly up. So since I took out all of these, all of this caulking, there's like a little bit of a recess. So I want to be able to, and you could do this in many pieces, it doesn't really matter. But you just want to get this kind of up on the tub, kind of in that recess, because you want to tape the actual tub. I don't want to have all of that material just filling up this whole gap. I want to be able to prevent that. I want to be able to pull that off. And then also just taping against the tub is going to make sure I don't have anything kind of building up and getting getting ugly. So if you can recess that grout joint, I mean, not all situations you're going to be able to do that, but you still want to just go slightly up on, on top of the tub so that you can actually seal to the tub. And it's just ever so slightly up on that tub. And then we go up the side of the tub. Now on this one, on the tile portion, I'm just covering the tile. I'm just gonna leave a little, leave some of that gap left so I can get all the way in there when I caulk. So going around the top of the tub, I'm just gonna just tape the actual tile. I'm gonna leave that, that space that's in between the tub available so that I can get all the way up inside of this. And if you go too far up on the tub, you can just cut some of that tape so it's not so far up on it. And again, I'm just leaving that gap available so that I can put that slurry mix all the way up against it. So I'm just protecting the tile. Doing the cleaning the night before, you're able to stick this tape on very easily. If, if you had any moisture on this tile, you're not gonna be able to tape it. So that's why I think having doing this the night before of cleaning just makes this process easier and I just have more confidence in that this all this masking tape is going to stay on here because the last thing you want to do is mess around with masking tape that's falling off as you're trying to finish the tub. If you have a window, make sure it's closed. You don't want to have any airflow in here. If you have a vent, maybe shut off your vent. You don't want to have a lot of airflow or any dust coming in here. So make sure that you're wearing a clean shirt. You know, make sure you scrub yourself before you get started here. You don't want to, anything that's going to fall into this is going to be very difficult to get out. So you want to be super clean. So just take your time and, and just pay attention to, you know, the amount of dust or things in the room. You want to make this as clean as possible. Okay, so we're going to a little roller. Got part B, part A. And this guy is kind of more of like a scooper. So you can scoop up the excess. I might actually be using one of those rubber putty knives to do that as well. Okay, so let's just get all of this off of my lid. You want to use every bit of this product. So just scrape all of this off. Scrape this off the side. I'll be doing this with them when I'm stirring, but I just want to make sure we get the majority of off of there. Okay, so then you want to just take your part B and just dump that into the, the mix here. Make sure you use every bit of it. And then we'll just get a stirring stick. Now, this is really important. You can only stir this by hand. No mixing drills, nothing too aggressive. Uh, you wanna just use a, a simple stirring stick and just mix this together. Now, this is kind of painful. It's 10 minutes, 10 minutes of stirring. Uh, that's a minimum requirement. So, but this is the most important, well, not most important, but this is a very important step. Uh, if you try to mix it with a, a mixer, it'll add air into the mixture and then you'll get a whole bunch of bubbles and could get some orange peeling in the tub. So the only way to really do this is by mixing it by hand and doing it for a minimum of 10 minutes. Okay, so then after 10 minutes of stirring, 
you want to let it sit for 10 minutes before you actually apply it to the tub. So I'm going to put a quart size cup underneath of my tub drain now that I took the drain out and I just have a little support. Obviously this is in a basement so I have all this access to work with. If this was a second floor you would just be wedging uh, stuff from your, your drywall up but we'll put this cup and try to get this as I have a little bit of shims here to just help me keep this to the tub. Just the situation I have with the joist. Okay, so now we just wedged that to the tub. Now we're gonna, any excess is gonna come into there. It's a good idea to rehearse your game plan on how you're gonna spread this. So this is uh, definitely unlike any other type of painting that you've done because it's really not painting. It's more agitating and letting this stuff flow down the tub. So my game plan is to pour everything on the out, on the top edge of this. And basically you're just gonna allow this stuff to drain and slope down into the, into the tub. So we're gonna do the top rim first, going across the top to allow this to slope into the tub. And as that all drains down, then we're gonna scoop up the excess, whatever we have in this container we'll be taking out. And then what we're gonna use is a little Dixie cup here to kind of dam some of this because I don't really necessarily want everything going into my cup down here. It's just, it's more, it's more work to actually get it out of there. So this is gonna help me dam this up and keep it from pouring into the, the, the drain hole here. But once we scoop that up, we're gonna do a second pass around the edge. So not on the top, but on the sides and then allow that to slope down, scoop up the excess and then pour it down the front. And then the final step is to get it spread on the base. So it's important to kind of visualize how you're gonna do this before you just start dumping it. Because the idea is, you know, we're allowing gravity to essentially coat this tub. The gravity is what's gonna really uh, make this product work. It's gonna be more like a glaze, a shell of um, paint. So once this is set for 10 minutes, we'll get started on that. So after 10 minutes of letting this sit, we're gonna just do a just a quick stir, nothing too much, just to agitate the material a little bit again before we pour it. And then we have this scooper came with it. We actually duct tape it to reinforce it because we're gonna be doing a lot of scooping up and putting back into our can. So I just wanted to make it a little bit more protective and, and last a little bit longer. But we can also have these putty knives too that can help, you know, get the material off the bottom of the tub. We're gonna dump the whole can all the way along this edge. So I'm just gonna bend my can a little bit to kind of give it a little bit of a more of a controlled pour. So I'm just squeezing that pail and then we're gonna pour this along the top edge. couple we had a little bit of that seal around here and we're gonna just dam this up so I just put a little bit of that material on here and then this is gonna help prevent that all going down into the bottom of the drain then you want to just take your flat roller and we're just gonna agitate this take some of this bulkier stuff so the roller is not necessarily like really coating it it's just more equally spreading it so just take this excess and push it over I'm just going to scoop up some extra here and get this on this above where my drain outlet is Okay, so then you can see how much excess I'm pushing. I'm, I'm very light on this roller. I'm just lightly touching it, but I'm just trying to take off a lot of this excess. You can see how it's moving down the edge of the tub. Let's get a little bit more.
one key with this is that you need to really just take your time. This is not meant to like aggressively paint. This is just moving the material around and allowing it to, to basically seep down the wall. Now you will have approximately an hour's worth of work time on this. So you don't have to be in a rush. This is more of a patience game here, but allow this to, to seep down. We might even scoop some of this up to get some of the areas that we're missing here. Because my first coat, I'd like to get around the edges, like to have a good, you know, 12 inches coming down the tub before I scoop everything up and go back around. So I'm just gonna put some around this missing area here. Okay, so we'll start scooping some of this excess up. I can use the roller to help. That's much easier actually. Just using this six inch putty knife allows me to get more out of it than that scooper. Just be careful, you don't wanna, you don't really wanna add air into this. Any air that you add into this is gonna create bubbles and Healing. So just be smooth with it and again, don't be spreading it too wildly with your roller. You don't want to sit this on the floor or the cardboard because you don't want to get anything in it. Okay, then we'll just go ahead and Pour the walls again. And you can do this as many times as you have to to coat it. So it's not like you have to get everything perfect the first time because you do have a solid hour of work time on this. I would just keep the pail inside the tub. I don't want to put it out on my cardboard and get anything underneath of this. So I'm going to keep the pail in here. And then I'll get my roller and I'll just agitate it. So I'm not putting any, I'm not putting really any pressure on this. I'm just rolling it and trying to get an even coat along the edge. So it'll look kind of terrible at first, but then as it gravity brings it down, it'll be a nice shell or a nice layer. And I would just recommend, like if you get a full coat all the way across, leave it alone after that. Don't keep going over it. I might just get a little bit more fill in some of these areas. Especially around this drain or the uh, overflow. Okay, so then all the way around, gently just agitating it. attention you look at all the areas if you see anything really thin just grab a little bit more of it with your roller and and fill it in just about making this even let me just do the back here real quick Then we'll go ahead and start filling our can again with the excess. I should mention this has really very little odor. So this epoxy, uh, you would think that a, 
a lot of a lot of refinishing kits really smell quite toxic. This really has very very little odor. That little Dixie cup really keeps that from seeping down below there. So probably any of the excess that actually goes into that little can. We probably are not going to even need it. So if you get a small enough can that, or a small enough Dixie cup that covers that drain hole, that's going to really help out, and then you don't have to run out of the room and and and, and get that pan. Because again, any any little dust particle that you bring into this can cause a problem. So you want to really maintain cleanness throughout this whole process. We'll go ahead and work on our front. So I'll just pour this on top of this tub flange and then allow this to just drape down the front. This stuff does wipe off some tile fairly easy so you can always have a, like a roll of paper towels near you. So you can see how that's kind of dripping down. So now I'm gonna just take some of this excess, push it around, and get into my corners here well. But just kind of agitate this to move down here. And there's a lot on this top of this deck, on this portion here, so we'll push this down. It's really thick on top here, so we want to spread that a little bit thinner. Anything that comes down here, you don't want to be messing around with the inside of the tub too much, but since I just did that tub deck, there are going to be some drips coming down on the side here, so I just want to evenly coat this so that I don't get any major drips coming down the side. Okay. And we'll even this out. I only scrape this up if it's clean. I have that nice I wouldn't scrape this off of the uh, the cardboard, but off of this frog tape. I feel pretty confident that's going to be pretty clean. So I'll just scrape some of this up. So I can even put it in my scooper if I wanted to. Okay. Why don't I just? I'm gonna just put this the rest of my scooper so I can get more accurate with my. I'm gonna just go across the top here and get more to flow down. Okay, so just agitate this. If you get something in there, you gotta pull that out of there. Trying to fill in all these voids. Okay, so then we'll just do one one more pass to get this nice and even, and then we're gonna start playing around with it. It does look terrible right now, but that'll all smooth out and even out once the gravity brings it down. Okay, so now we got the outside done. We're gonna leave that alone, and then we're gonna start pushing some of this excess on the bottom of the tub. Now, at this point, you're done with all the sides. Don't, don't touch anything more around the actual sides. And we're just gonna try to 
manipulate this to be nice and even and not get it on my shirt here. You do have a little bit of time to keep working with this, so just pay attention. And in the floor, I should say, you probably have the most time to play around with. So really concentrate on these sides first. And in the floor, I mean, you're gonna have a good hour to hour and a half of time to mess around with it. So don't, don't be too concerned about the floor getting coated. Okay, so at this point, I know that I have enough to cover everything. I still got even a little bit in my pail. So I'm gonna take this out now. And then the excess is just gonna drain into that, that little container I have down there. So I'm not concerned about having, needing any more because I have enough for the entire tub here. So we'll just let this all kinda, you can almost just take some of this excess and push it down into your drain now. And again, this is much, much easier than keeping that tub drain intact and then trying to scoop everything out. This way it's kind of foolproof. Any of the excess is just gonna drain down there naturally and you're gonna have a really nice coat all the way around that drub and around that drain hole. And then when you put the new drain assembly in, it's gonna look like a brand new tub and you won't have any issues with peeling around the drain because you have everything coated up to it. So we're gonna allow this to set up a little bit more and then we'll probably roll it one more time to get some of the extra larger amounts that are pulling down here. But since we have the drain open, it should just all kind of naturally go into the drain. I kind of touched the front here, so I still got more time to mess with it. It's probably been about three minutes since I've had this all coated. One of the final steps they really kind of help just in case there's any air bubbles and manipulate, you know, you can help kind of push things a little bit around with the heat gun. So we're just gonna slowly go around this. This isn't really necessarily used to dry it. This is just to help manipulate and move the coating a little bit more. So it'd be really tough to tell on camera, but you can really kind of see just a slight movement of the, the epoxy kind of just evening itself out. And that's all this is really doing. And then if there's any air bubbles in there, it'll, it'll help to pop them and then smooth them out. So this front still kind of looks bad, but I just, I only poured that a couple minutes ago. So we're gonna give a little bit more time. I got a little bit of something here. Scrape that out. And we just coat. So you still have plenty of time to work with some of it. sure I don't have too much of a coat on the bottom. So again, five minutes later, I'm, I'm still just kind of pushing a little bit more down the drain. So this epoxy is always just gonna kind of follow the contour of your tub. So if you had any scratches or nicks, you know, it's possible that you're still gonna see the, the indentation of it, but it'll be all white. So this isn't necessarily made to like patch anything. It'll coat it and it'll just go to the same contour of, of that scratch or nick, but it'll look a lot better being a nice shiny white finish. So we'll just let that all just kind of seep down into that pail I have there. Again, just getting rid of any of the air bubbles. So then any excess here, you can see how it's all pulling on here. I want to keep that a nice joint right against the bottom. So this will all harden. So I'll be able to cut this out with a utility knife after this dries and just peel this all off. So you can, if you needed excess material, obviously 
pull this up and put it back in your bucket so you can use it. But uh, if you're done, don't worry about it. Just let it let it harden up and then you can just cut it, score it with a utility knife and you'll have a nice clean line right against the bottom of your tub. So next day, this is where you can just go ahead and cut right up against the tub and remove all this, remove all the uh, excess material and your masking tape. So I'm putting some significant pressure on there because I don't want to I don't want to peel up any of this. So that's still, still some got underneath there. Boy, it's like a, it's a really hard, hard material. So this is this was really well taped off. So this could even this kind of demonstrates that if you try to keep a grout joint there, nice that it's going to get covered with this stuff no matter what. So that's why I think it's definitely better just to plan on redoing this joint with new caulking because it's kind of like water. There's, it's, it just wants to seep down. This tool really helps out with scraping. This is a, considered a glazing tool, but uh, this is more used for scraping out caulking. But this flat scraper is nice and sharp, and it's small, so you're able to really dig in places with it. So I highly recommend grabbing just a cheap little scraper like this to get some of that excess epoxy off the floor or get the caulking removed. I don't think that's chip, chipping off that tub. It doesn't take a lot to do that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and caulk this now. So there's two different products that I like using. One is just a traditional 100% silicone. And then you also have the DAP 3.0, which is also 100% waterproof. So you just wanna make sure that other one says 100% waterproof. But I do kinda like the DAP because it has a thicker consistency. It's all on what you're used to using. If you use this all the time, then I would definitely recommend continuing with that. But if you do want a little bit of a, a thicker consistency, this DAP does pretty well. I, I kind of like the consistency of this better than the traditional silicone. It's about a quarter inch opening, and I always like to back cut this hole, and this just kind of flattens out what I'm gonna be spreading. So let's just go ahead and... And then using a drip-free caulking gun really helps out a lot. This is made by Newborn. Having it drip-free uh, eliminates a lot of extra mess. So as soon as I let go of the trigger, it's not gonna continue to pour out. I'm just gonna finger this joint. If you put the right amount of sealing on, you really don't need a special tool or anything. You just need to feather it out with your finger. For this joint, 
I just got a matching caulking. This is Mapasil T. This is 100% silicone as well. So this is gonna be good for going against the tub. Okay, then I just have some soapy water in a spray bottle. And this is gonna help prevent this from smearing all over the tub and smearing all over the floor. So if you wet it down with some soapy water, that'll help eliminate the smearing. So I hope these tips helped you out with refinishing your tub. The biggest key is being patient, paying attention to detail and taking your time. Uh, the one thing you cannot see on this video is the feel of this tub. This has such a nice porcelain coating feeling. I know this is an epoxy covering, but it really does feel like a brand new tub. So we are able to rejuvenate this old style 50s tub and then we're gonna have years and years of, of lasting use of this. So if you guys haven't subscribed, subscribe to our channel. It'll make sure to get the next video that we have coming out and give this, thumb, this video a like because it helps other people find it. Thanks again.